Mother, I cannot do that today. I already told you. I am at the eye doctor. I don't understand why you need me to pick up back pills. I did not just pick up your back pills. Oh, that was the other pills. Yeah, we won't talk about that. Mother, it makes me uncomfortable. I am not uncomfortable with the human body. I'm just uncomfortable with your human body, and I don't care to discuss whatever goes on with it. Now, if you don't... Yes, Mother, I have to go, okay? Go, go lay down. Won't you just go in yonder and lay down and settle down a little bit? Maybe that will help with your spasms. It could be that you're getting wound up over nothing. Again. I'm not having this discussion now. If we have to go back to therapy, I will, but I'm not doing it right now. I have to go. There is a lovely lady in here, and you are embarrassing me. Don't start singing that song. I am not your sunshine. Good. I'm hanging up. Goodbye. I, I do apologize for that, ma'am. That was very uh, un, un, unadult of me, if that's a word. Un, unadult, unadulterated. I'm very unadulterated today. It's Mother's birthday, and and she gets she gets especially celebratory on her birthday. She goes and gets a bottle of peppermint schnapps at the liquor store, and and she just parties all by herself and. I don't care to be around her on her birthday. I, I I only got her some half off chocolate yesterday after Valentine's Day, and she was insulted that I got it at a discount. I figured she'd be proud of me, cause you know I, I'm proving that I am I, I'm, I'm a wise spender. I know how to I know how to manage my my wealth. Not that I have a lot of wealth, but what little I do have. Yeah, um, yes, ma'am. I, I believe I believe I, I was brought in here. I waited out in that little room, and then they brought me in this little room, and they said that the doctor would be with me momentarily. Uh, my name is Carl. You you are more than welcome to you, you you. I could kiss your hand, or you could kiss mine. My hand. I wasn't talking about anything dirty. You don't have to. I don't. I don't guess. No. Oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to spread viruses. I. I know. Oh no. I. I. I yes, ma'am. I did see that sign on the door. And um. Well, I. I would have worn a mask, but I kind of figured that maybe y'all didn't think that through. So you have a sign on the door, as you mentioned, that says "masks required." Well, first of all, I can't wear a mask. And second of all, you have, what, okay, let me, let me explain. When I come into this environment, y'all have all kinds of fumes in here. Oh, no, no, I like the fumes, that's the thing. When I come in here, I sniff these fumes from, I don't know if it's from cleaning the devices and the weird little, little machines, you got little things come up to the face. I think clearer in here, and I want to get a full dose of whatever it is y'all are using in here, whatever that fume is. Do you smell it? Yeah, it smells like my grandmother right before she died. I like it. It's nice. If they made a clone like that, I'd wear it. <laughs> so I have to leave it off. But at the same time, you know, didn't y'all stop and think? You, two things. You got people coming in here in glasses. Have you ever tried to wear a mask when you got glasses on and it fogs up? That's dangerous. I could, I could, my glasses could fog up and I could bump into something expensive and knock it over and, and break it or, you know, I, I could, you know, bump up a patient and then they could fall and sue me. Um, that, so there's that problem, but also... What, you can't wear a mask while you're getting your eyes examined. I mean, everybody knows that. Well, no, you, I mean, you, surely you've seen it working here. I'm not saying your name is Shirley. I mean, like, sure, 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 surely, sure, sure, surely. We see, because when you come up to me with these devices and you need me to look at stuff, 
I, 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 I can't see because some of it I got have my glasses on like I say they're fogged up and they're going to get in the way of whatever device you're mashing up against my face. It makes everything inconvenient, you know. I mean, do you, are, are you not feeling the, the inconvenience here? The complete inaccessibility and obtuseness of this environmental situation in which you have placed me as your, you know, patient. Like, I, I am your prized possession. I am your patient. Well, no, I did not. Well, she didn't ask me for my, my insurance information. Was I supposed to volunteer that, just whip it out, put it on the counter? My insurance information, I mean, not anything else. I would not do that in public. Well, unless I was dating somebody and they were into that kind of thing. And if we really loved each other, I might... I mean, I do. I had it out. I put it here. I thought, I thought maybe somebody would want it because I'm a new patient. Do you know I am new here? Uh, my name is Carl. I kind of figured as a new patient we'd do this thing where we all stand up in a waiting room and introduce ourselves and tell everybody a little bit about themselves so we have a chance to get to know we, one another better. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't do that in a doctor's office. I mean they made us do it in school every year on the first day. I hated it when I was small. Everybody called me Sling Blade, and I didn't know what that meant. I still don't know, but I've decided to just go with it because it sounds like a pretty hardcore nickname. I'm, if you don't call me Sling Blade, you can. It's okay. Um, but now I've kind of I've kind of grown to where I've missed that because you get to meet interesting people that way. And I thought maybe it might be a way to meet a nice young lady like yourself. I mean, if you would like, we could do like a two-person meet and greet. We could just do two meets and two greets and uh, and forget all the people in the waiting room and the assorted staff and people. My name, my name is Carl. Again, if you would love to touch me, I wouldn't mind. I mean, if you just want to just gently caress my hand a little bit or oh, maybe later. No, I, I understand germs, yes, I know. Everybody's scared of germs all of a sudden, walking around covered up like a bank robber and scared to look at anybody. It's hard to meet anybody in a pandemic. It has severely cramped my social life. And I feel that I'm losing my social skills because, you know, we went for a long time. and You weren't supposed to get near anybody or, you know, you have lockdowns and stay home and... And mother, she was scared to death. She's like, Carl, don't you go out there and bring me that coronavirus. I'm like, mother, ain't nothing going to kill you. You're going to outlive everybody. You, that coronavirus is more scared of you than you are it. It stopped dead in its tracks if she called out. She'd kill it with peach snobs. Anyway, I, ha I do have my, my insurance card. I know this doesn't look like an insurance card. It's Band-Aids. It's a three-pack of Band-Aids. But I was given this by uh, Robert down there at the Bait and Tackle. Um, this is my insurance information. Um, it, it, it Right here, it is un underwritten by Beatty's Tool and Tire. You can see right here and right there in the, in the, body, part, in the body shop right there. Down there on Lee Street, the body shop is also one of the, the co-insured people here and the partner's insurance. Um, it is real insurance, yes, ma'am. I, 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 I talked to this guy, Robert, in an alley, and he sells insurance out of the back of his car, and he said that it's, it's, it's legitimate insurance. And, and he said, you got something to write on. I'll give you your numbers. I gave him some money. And he had me do it real quiet, like why we had to get in his car where nobody could see us. I guess because he doesn't want word to get out about what a good deal it is, because he'd be overrun with customers. So I had to get in his car real secret, like give him some money. And he said, you got something to write on. Well, I didn't. And all I had was my shopping. I'd gone to the drugstore to get some stuff for mother. And uh, I had a box of Band-Aids. So I pulled out a sheet of Band-Aids, like here a sheet and he wrote it down real quick on here and he said you just give this to whatever facility you go to for your treatments now it does say here that i have a co a copay 
Um, normally, I just give people like a fruit cake, one of those Claxton's fruit cakes. I think that's the standard copay. I do have that with me. Now, do I give that to you or do I give it to the girl up front? Okay, what part of all that did you not follow? Because I, I need to know how far back to go. Do I need to rewind to the beginning? See, I was told this would be worry-free insurance. I was told that this was going to be easy peasy. I just need to know where the fruitcake goes. I mean, do I give it to you? Do I give it to the doctor? Who gets the fruitcake? I mean, I don't... I don't appreciate that joke, ma'am. I, I myself am not a fruitcake. Do I look like I'm full of yummy goodness? Well, maybe I am. I mean, I am. I am a little bit yummy good myself. <laughs> I can't compete with a fruitcake. Now... On here, on this card, it says that telehealth is preferred. And I said to Robert, I said, what is telehealth? Is, that, sounds, that sounds high tech. He said it is. You call this phone number on here, and it's, it's a pay phone right outside of Nathanville. And you call it. And there's a retired postal worker that answers the phone. And you ask that postal worker your health questions. If you need a checkup or you need a diagnosis, you call them. And they have a magic eight ball. And you have to phrase your questions as yes or no. And then the retired postal worker on the other end of the line on that pay phone outside of Nathanville will turn that magic eight ball and tell you your answer. Unfortunately, I have found it to not be entirely accurate. I did contact telehealth about my eyes and I asked if I needed an exam. And all the retired postal worker would tell me is that I need to ask again later. Well, after about four or five calls of this, I started to get the feeling that I was getting a run around for my insurance people. So I decided I better come here. Now, I, I did call and make an appointment and I did tell the lady I had insurance. Uh, and I do. So, okay, well, if you, if you would take that to her, that would be, that would be great. Yeah, because I, I don't know what, I don't know what to do otherwise. Yeah, yes, ma'am. The, these, well, they're sort of prescription. See, a long time ago, when I was in, oh, I believe I was in the fifth grade. If you don't mind, I'm going to put these back on. They're kind of like my security blanket. I feel weird looking directly at beautiful women without them. That's better. A long time ago, when I was a, a little tyke, I was a, a wee slip of a boy. Um, I was in Little League, and the coach kept saying, Carl, are you blind? Are you blind? Well, Mother took that to mean that there was a problem with my eyes because it couldn't have been anything else. I couldn't hit the ball. So she took me to see some dude in an alley. I have a history of, of dealings in alleys took me to this dude and, and gave me these glasses and said that would fix my problem. And mother gave him a chicken pot pie and some almonds as payment, which I found rather strange, but mother always knows how to handle things. She knows the best way to deal with problems. So I've had these glasses since then. Now, um, I didn't really see a need to do anything about it. I mean... You know, but I've noticed lately that things look fuzzier than normal, and I don't know why. It's almost to the point that when I take my glasses off, things look clearer than when I got my glasses on. Now, what do you suppose would cause that? Well, I understand I can ask the doctor, but, you know, just between you and me, I mean, we all know who really ruins these places, right? It's not the doctors. It's just you ladies, the nurses. Y'all y'all do y'all do the real work around here, doctors. Pfft, what do they do? Drive fancy cars and refuse to go out on dates with people. That's all they do. So why do you suppose I'd be? 
no, I, I don't suppose. I have not had any head injuries to the best of my knowledge. I mean, I don't think so. Um, I, well, now, I did see this movie one time. Now, this was a long time ago. I saw this movie where there was this boy, and he got bit by a spider. And then after that, you know, so his hand swells up like a big old baseball. And instead of going to the doctor, he just goes to bed. And the next day, his glasses made everything look fuzzy, and he could see without them. No, but I've heard, I have not, as far as I know, I have not been bitten by a spider. But, you know, they do say you eat spiders at night while you're asleep. Which, is that a conscious thing? Do you just deliberately go looking for spiders to eat, or do they just go in your mouth? Or I'm just wondering if I ate one of those magic spiders. I mean, would it do, it, it do the same thing if you just ate one instead of it biting you? Because if you think about it, you bite, if it eat, you eat it. All that venom's going to go down in you. So it's in you. I wonder if I ate a spider that had that magic power, whatever it was. Some kind of genetic experiments on this spider made it, I don't know, something weird about it. I'm just wondering if it was something like that. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, yes, ma'am, I will, I will ask the doctor. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I will wait, I will wait for the doctor, um, do you think they'll be along any time or in a minute? Okay. Do you have anything in here I can read or play with while I wait? Because sometimes I get bored. No, I won't. Yes, ma'am. I won't touch anything. I, I, know, I understand. Everything in here looks expensive because I don't know what any of this stuff is, which means it's probably expensive. I won't. I won't touch it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Well, if you would take that card up front... And I filled out paperwork and left it with the girl at the desk. She did not ask for an insurance card. I'd have given her my, my strip of Band-Aids if she had. Yeah. I'll, I'll, will you let me know who gets the fruitcake? Because I got it. I'm ready to, I'm ready to deliver just any time I hand it right off. Because I, I pay my bills. I mean, I'm not one to slack off on payments. I believe in... Yes, ma'am. I know you got to go. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll wait right here. I won't touch anything. Flavor can I drop? They're tingly. That didn't do a thing for me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Are you my doctor? You're Dr. Fox. You sure are. I have no offense, but my stars, you are stunning. I have to say, I am Carl. Please do shake my hand. Oh, an elbow bump. Okay. No, I know. Germs. I hear you. I hate this pandemic. I don't ever get to touch beautiful women anymore. I can't even accidentally bump into them because of the social distancing. I can't get close enough to justify an accidental bump. Life is unfair. Uh, I, yes, yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, I am here for an exam. Yes. Do I have to read some charts and stuff? Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. You sure can. You go on and look at them there. I can see you better without my glasses on. I figured I should probably mention that. That's concerning. Yes, ma'am. My last eye appointment. Now, what do you consider to be an eye appointment? Is it where you actually go into a place like this with degrees and stuff on the walls and, you know locks on the door, stuff like that. Well, if it's that. Now, I did I did have a consultation in an alleyway when I was in elementary school because my, my baseball coach kept saying, are you blind? Are you blind? And mother was worried. And, uh, and she paid in chicken pot pies and nuts. And, uh, I'm sorry, that, don't worry about it. Um, took me there, and that's when I got those glasses right there that you're holding. And, um, but it, the funny thing was, I still couldn't hit the ball. And my coach said, 
that it wasn't my eyesight. It's just that I was terrible at baseball. Do you think that could have been it? I don't really see myself as a bad baseball player, but come to think of it, I never actually once made contact with the ball. I make plenty of contact with balls now. Just mine. I don't mean to be dirty, though. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to put these back on if you don't mind. I, I feel weird without them. I feel like I have beady eyes, and then I feel like a naked mole rat when I look around, and I'm afraid people will be turned off by that. My glasses make my eyes look bigger because of the magnification. See, magnification, if you're not familiar with that. Well, oh, you know what that is. Well, you're an eye doctor. Maybe you learned that in, in eye doctor school. I, it, well, my, you know, but you understand, though, magnification is where it makes things look bigger than, than they are. That's my, okay, I just making sure you understood. I, I clear up any confusion for you because I'm here. I'm here as an educator. My job on earth is to just help people understand things. That's what I do. So, and uh, well, no, I don't. I don't have any other pro. No, ma'am. I did not go through and, and look in any of your machines in that little room. No, ma'am. See, I'm claustrophobic. And, and that, and that the, the other lady, not the one who was just in here, she said that I needed to go in there and do the machines in there and they would record the information. I said, ma'am, I cannot go in that tiny room because I'm claustrophobic and I feel like the walls are closing in on me. And I don't even know that my insurance covers those fancy machines because they look like something that would cost a lot to sit at. So... Maybe when the information on my insurance comes back, but then I would have to use you. Do you have a tranquilizer gun? Because if you could just dart me, you might be able to get me in there. Now you might have to carry me and hold me up, but that might be a way to get me in there without a panic attack because I do have issues with claustrophobia. Now, um, well, not the lady took my insurance card. I'm just waiting. Do I give you the, the, uh, do I give you the fruit cake or do I have to give it to the lady up front? What part of that did you not understand? Well, that's my copay for my insurance. Is it a Claxton fruit cake, the one pounder? That's what I'm supposed to do. That's the standard that's the standard copay. I don't know why that sounds strange to you. Well, don't worry about it. They'll they'll get back to me, I'm sure. Well, see I need is part of is part of my 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 physical that I'm having to get done. That's another reason why I'm here. See, I was supposed to get it done at the beginning of the season, but I wasn't even aware initially that I was trying out for anything. See, well, okay, hey, let me go back. So this goes back to last spring. This this is how it started, all right? I fell in love with a softball player. I did. I saw her out there. I was driving by one day on my way to a job interview at the Quick Check. That's the gas station. And on the corner up there at Mars, you know. So I was on my way up there for an, an interview as a cashier and a gas pump attendant because I thought it would be a really good career opportunity. And I saw this lady out there swinging a pitch. Man, she, she had this wild action. Like her arm would just whirl around like it wasn't even really attached to anything. I've never seen anything like it. She was out there pitching softballs. And she was on this, this softball team, and I thought she was just so beautiful. And I stopped by there, and, and I was I wanted to talk to her. And I got in a line, and I didn't know. I, I thought it was a line, you know, to get on in there to talk to the players after the game. I couldn't find out later. It was it was an audition. It was a line of people auditioning for the, the, uh, the Camden kickball team i didn't know that we were going to be doing that but then i noticed that all the softball players had sat down and they were they were watching us and we were going to get out there and audition to be on this kickball team is for adults and so well I, I thought here's my chance lord the god has shined down upon me i got a chance to impress her with my kickball skills the problem is I haven't played kickball in 30 years, and, and I, 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 my body doesn't move like it did 30 years ago. Have you noticed as you get older, your body just freezes up on you, and, 
and you start moving like your parents and you know you used to laugh at them for the way they get up and hobble around and you find yourself hobbling around and you're like karma's a bitch so i got up there and i was going to do the the trial part of the trial was you had to roll the ball like pitching it you know roll it and then kick it really hard well apparently i kicked it really really great and it went a long way and i saw that, that pretty lady was watching and she whispered something to the lady next to her and then they were hugging and 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 like it made her all romantic to see me kick that that's the way i interpreted it anyway that's what i thought so i got on the kickball team and i was supposed to submit some information for my physical and all that. Well, I didn't have any of that information. And, but they finally came back around like, Carl, you got to submit this stuff. So I want to stay on the team. Not for her, but the other ladies that I see out there. Sometimes they come out and watch. It's a lot of people's grandmothers. But I'm tell you something. There's some good-looking grandmothers out there in the world. You, you don't, don't underestimate a grandmother now. There's some pretty ones out there. But we, we had our award ceremony today. I have to submit my eye exam information when I get done here so I can play next season. We had our award ceremony, and I got two trophies. You want to see them? I got trophies. Look. I got this one. I got this one um, as an honorable mention after we finished our banquet. We had hot dogs. And, uh, and, and I got this one. I know it looks like a skilled ball player. Actually, I got this one because I fell down a lot and I was voted the one most familiar with gravity. I spent most of the season looking a lot like that. Turns out my one good kick in the audition was all I had in me and there were no more. And I spent most of my time looking kind of like this fella right here. I was just, it was unfortunate. So I, I, I fell down enough to where I got a trophy today. So that was mine because I'm really good at falling down. And then I also got a, an honorable mention, too, for the most questionable stance, because they couldn't ever understand why, when I was waiting to kick the ball, I looked like I was using the bathroom. Well, that's just the most comfortable stance. I mean, that's just the way I stand, like this dude right here. I mean, that's just what you do right there. Look. So I got most questionable stance. I don't really know that it's an achievement, but it's a trophy. And mother's going to be very proud when she sees this. going to be the best birthday ever. Today's my mother's birthday. And uh, she doesn't know anything about this. She's going to be sore that I didn't take her to the banquet. But when she finds out that it costs $10 to go, she'll understand why I can't spend that kind of money taking her to the banquet. I mean... I can take her to Costco and get a hot dog and a drink for $1.50. You can get a whole lot of meals for $10 at the Costco snack bar. Do you ever dine at their snack bar? It's delectable. I would love to take you sometime. I do notice, ma'am, if, if you don't mind me saying, I do notice you are not wearing a wedding ring. Oh, you don't have to worry about the softball lady no she told me that i was barking up the wrong tree which i didn't quite get a lot of times people tell me things and they don't quite compute and i think it's because people just don't understand how to communicate effectively and uh i i, I all i can do is just you know try to try to educate people and help them understand terms that they're confused with but if they're confused to the point that they're saying things I don't understand, I kind of feel like there's no hope. Like, I, ca I cannot help you with your confusion. If you're so confused, I'm confused. It's a whole thing. So, yes, I, I need to get on home um, before it starts to get dark because it is Mother's birthday. I'm going to get her a 10-pack of soft tacos at the Taco Bell on the way home. We can splurge on that and spend the rest of the night at home. And, and watch Hee Haw, and that's what we'll do. So if we could just get going on, on well, I cannot be out after dark because I can't drive. I got my night blindness. And when you have night blindness, see, maybe you don't understand what night blind... Oh, well, I was... No, ma'am. Well, no. 
but I, I was diagnosed. Yes, I have been diagnosed. I've had several judges confirm that I'm blind as a bat and I can't see in the dark. I keep hitting things. I've hit three scarecrows in the last 20 years. And so the judges had, had diagnosed me with that and then mother confirmed it. I had to get a second opinion, so I asked her. She said, Carl, you are definitely blind. You got naive blindness just like your grandfather. I never knew him. He drank himself to death. Well, not literally. Well, I guess in kind of a way he did. He drowned in a well. So I guess in a way he kind of did. So you want me to read some charts? You don't need to look at my eyeballs, do you? I don't think that's covered in my insurance. So you want me to read some charts? Okay. All right. Back there. Yeah, that, no, you're not in my way. E. I see it. I don't see the rest. The rest of that's not words. It's just little blobs. I see the big E, but that's. I don't believe the rest of that makes a word. It's just a bunch of jumbles. I'll take my glasses off. Oh, that's actually better. E F P. Not like not like urination. P L four. Well, it looks like a number. Is that a house? What is that? Oh, an L. Huh. A Q. And then right next to that, it looks like a dog I had when I was about five. Oh, that's a B. Look like my dog. Yes, ma'am, I do find that it is better without my glasses. That's what I'm concerned about. How can I effectively play kickball when I, I, I have this issue? I would like to get a real trophy next year instead of the ones I got. Because the ones I got, I'm starting to think, were not real. I don't want to be too insecure, but I think they're fake. I think they did it to make a good sport of me and make fun of me. But, oh, no, no, you don't need to do that. No, you, you keep that. Mother told me don't ever touch anything here. That's why I brought one. This is my paddle. Because I heard that y'all have paddles here, and I wasn't sure what, you know, like how kinky we were going to get in here. This is the one that Mother used to spank me with when I was a kid. It's a spoon. It's, this is a spoon. But she said use use a paddle so you can read. Do I, can I put my glasses back on? Because you're making me self-conscious. You're too pretty or something. Uh, which one am I looking at? Oh, I need to do, okay. See, so yeah, I have to tell you which way that the, the lines are pointing. Well, ma'am, with all due respect, they're not pointing any certain way. Oh, the open side, like, okay, okay. I didn't know if I needed to explain something. Okay, hold on. All right, get the slides going here. That way. That just looks like a circle. Oh, that way. That way. That way. Okay. Am I supposed to close this eye? Mm. Okay, these appear to be swimming. It looks like they're swimming in the in the in. What are they doing? Are they moving? Is this a movie? Ma'am, with all due respect, they're not do. Hold on a minute. No, I know, but I'm gonna take these off. Oh, that's way better. That way. That way. That way. That way and that way oh yes ma'am it is significantly better without them I'm very concerned yes do you think my, my kickball career is over do you think my days of kickball are over or is there hope for me am I gonna die I'm almost afraid because mother she went on this thing it was called the internet she bought this gateway computer in 1998, and every now and then she can get it to work. And she was on it the other day, and she she was on dial up, and uh, she she said that she looked up my my symptoms on this website. I think it was called WebMD. Are you familiar with that? 
she went on there and she put in, you know, poor eyesight. And it said that I may have cancer and I may die. So I'm really worried about it. I mean, I don't want I don't want to pass away. I'm too young. Well, that's what the website said. I mean, if you find it on the internet, it's got to be true. I mean, why would they lie? I don't see how you can just, you know, watch me read a little bit of stuff and decide just willy-nilly that it's, it's a lot more simple than that. You know, I understand you're a big fancy doctor. You got letters after your name and you're indescribably beautiful when you have legs that I'd like to lick for a day or two. I don't mean to be too forward. But how do you know that it's so simple? What do you know that I don't? I got I got the retired postal worker with the magic eight ball. What have you got? Well, yeah, you can hold my glasses. What's that? What are you spraying on my glasses? Oh, glasses cleaner. That's a weird coincidence. You got glasses cleaner and you're spraying it on glasses. And you're wiping them off. Well, I'll be. Well, I don't make a habit of doing that to my glasses. Mother said it's bad luck to clean your glasses. I, I don't reckon I've ever done it. Why would I? Why would I clean my glasses? It's bad luck. I'm probably gonna get killed on the way home. Oh my goodness! I've been cured. I'm cured. I don't believe it. You, I can see. I can see stuff. This is incredible. This is amazing. I cannot believe it. Okay. Well, I, I need to go. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna run out to the car and I'm gonna grab. Well, yes, ma'am. But I gotta go because. I, well, no. Mo mother's already got a shaman coming to the house to do some cleansing and then. That we're supposed to do a really quick exorcism because, you know, I need to be clean and ready to go before the, the cancer takes me out. I gotta let her know that you've cured me. Oh no, ma'am, I don't need anything. I don't need anything. I'm gonna go grab that I'm gonna go grab my I'm gonna go grab my fruitcake. I'm gonna give you the fruit cake. And you know what? I've got an extra fruit cake I was saving for myself. I'm gonna give you two fruit cakes because I, I feel like you deserve it. I wanna hug you right now and and I know that's not appropriate, but what do you say? You want to give me a hug? You you fix my eyes. I can see. Like I could read any chart you want to. I bet I could read the tag on your bra from here. No offense. I don't mean that dirty. Would you like a hug? Because I really am just feeling the love right now. Well, maybe next time. Because I'm definitely coming back. I'm not threatening you. I'm just I'm just underlining my point. Thank you so much, Dr. Fox. You are not just a fox. You're smart. You are so smart. You're like one of the few doctors I've met that like seems to actually know something. Congratulations on that, by the way. That's great. Because you're you're a lady and you're smart. That's that's great. That's great. I, I fully respect that. So if you're not doing anything, I just want you to know. On Thursday nights, we're out there playing kickball at the municipal field. If you're ever interested, you could come out there and watch me flex my muscles. And, and uh, yeah, I, I've learned to fall. You know, learning to fall is a skill. I've gotten really good at it. You should see me. I could hop right back up. It's, it's beautiful. Yes. So come on out and see me because I think that'd be great. Okay, I got to get home. I'm going to leave the fruitcake. Thank you so much for curing me. You are a lifesaver, you are a godsend, and you are a fox. And I can say that because it's your name. <laughs>